but twice a year ago, including in the A-10 tournament. This game was scheduled for December the 30th, but because of the COVID-19 pauses and shutdowns, it has been rescheduled, and thus, here we are today. The start of a rare two-game series. Hey. The Minutemen will be in St. Louis for the regularly scheduled game on Sunday afternoon. You feel like, really, if you're UMass, this is one you absolutely need to get. Minutemen averaging 77 points per contest. Two of these offenses really at the top of the A-10 and being able to score the basketball. Ten on the shot clock. Kelly left wide open. He's got it. Well, Rich Kelly still above 50% from three-point range this season, and he picks up where he left off in that Rhode Island game on Saturday. 38 of 73 from three-point range. Now here's St. Louis with their first possession, 78 and a half points for contest as Collins gets it in deep. And nice move for Francis Okoro, the Oregon transfer. He's really done a nice job solidifying that front line for St. Louis since it being inserted into the starting lineup. And how about the damage that opponents have done in the paint recently against Massachusetts? TJ Weeks looking for some daylight. No luck there, and Okoro grabs the rebound, averaging seven and a half per game. Open shooter in the corner for three. That's good for Jordan Nesbitt. Well, St. Louis does a lot well on offense. They rebound the ball well, they shoot the ball well, they have the best scoring offense in the Atlantic 10, and Miniman have left them wide open in both defensive possessions. It really feels like a difficult matchup in terms of the way these teams play for the Minutemen. We'll see if they can get off to a good start here. Steal for Hargrove, and he finds Okoro, and he'll flush it through. Francis Okoro just does a good job of some broken field running that time. Crashing to the basket gets the easy dunk. How about this for opponents? Last two games against UMass, outscoring the Minutemen 78 to 20 in the paint. Well, Luka Brykovic down at Davidson had a lot to say about that, but he's done that to a lot of teams. But Rhode Island outscoring UMass, I believe it was 46 to 8 in the paint on Saturday. UMass would like to establish Stedman here as he goes on Okoro. Little turnaround for him, no luck there, and another rebound for Francis Okoro. Michael struggled to find the touch the last few games in the paint. You can see the command Yuri Collins taking right there, directing offense, settling things down, you know, doing a good job hitting the breaks in this offensive possession for St. Louis. Eight to shoot. It's a fun matchup right here. Okoro getting deep on Stedman again and left it short. Well defended that time by Michael Stedman. Did a good job staying on his feet, keeping those arms up. Kelly draws the foul on Jordan Nesbitt. Take a look at the Big Y world-class market recipe for success today for UMass. You got to defend the paint for St. Louis. It's guard to three. That's anybody that plays the Minutemen this year. And certainly that inside part of the game, Jay, is going to be so crucial for UMass if they're going to have any success, not just defending it, but being able to score inside. Last several games, they've left a lot of points on the deck you know, not being able to finish in the paint. UMass coming off a loss against Rhode Island. Here's Fernandes in the paint, five to shoot, got stripped, loose ball, th two on the shot clock. Stedman with a desperation shot, and it goes. Good recognition by Stedman that the shot clock was running out and found himself with a little bit of daylight. Some situational awareness for the big fella. St. Louis up seven to five. St. Louis checking in as a top 75 team and the Ken Palm ratings. Doing so despite not having perhaps their best player this year. Javante Perkins out with an injury. This one missed by Okoro. Buttrick rhythm three. Back rim no, and Collins taps it to himself, but Weeks is right there. Fernandes will let it fly. That's good. Noah Fernandes on the board. Well, Noah Fernandes wide open. It wasn't necessarily the prettiest situation for UMass, but they stayed after it, created the loose ball, and Fernandes wide open on that left side. How big are those rebound opportunities going to be tonight? The second chance points are going to be a huge key as Miniman able to reel in another rebound as they've stopped St. Louis, I believe, in the last three possessions. St. Louis plus seven in rebounding, the best in the A-10. Rich Kelly off the glass, no good there, and the rebound for Hargrove. Minutemen right around minus two in that rebounding department. That margin had been worse earlier in the season. Jimerson got a good look, missed it. Offensive board and a second effort here for the Billikens. Hargrove for three, and he gets it. Hargrove left wide open. Fernandes a little slow getting over there. 
so many weapons on this St. Louis team. They play well as a team. You know, they have a bunch of guys that can get the double figures pretty easily, so it's tough to really focus on one of them. Jimerson probably would be the obvious one, though, it's better than 16 points. Yeah, they're really fun to watch. Tough shot for T.J. Weeks, but he coaxes it through. Yeah, good patience by T.J. Weeks. Quick Jimerson break the other way. Loose. Here, and he gets the getting the better of them over that stretch. That's your favorite road trip of the year, isn't it? Well, it's it's always amazing that the Minutemen in St. Louis end up having to play home and home. The two, you know, basically, if you throw Rhode Island out of the equation, the two longest trips you could have in the Atlantic 10. And UMass will be heading there Saturday for a Sunday afternoon game as Gibson Jimerson, the redshirt freshman from Richmond, is able to convert on the three-point play. Here's Greg Jones, who can shoot it from that range. Off the mark, no good. Offensive board and a putback for Trent Buttrick. Miniman working hard to reel in some offensive rebounds. That's already two for them, and Buttrick able to convert. Buttrick at 11 and a half points per contest. Billikens up by one with the basketballs. They've gone to the bench as well and brought in DeAndre Jones, the transfer from Central Arkansas State. Secondary guard for St. Louis. Here's Jimerson on the drive. Got bumped, no call, and finishes at the window. That's a hard take for Gibson Jimerson. And that's already four assists for Yuri Collins. How about TJ Weeks on the other end for three. Well, these two teams are uh, setting up for a shootout right now. Two very high-powered offenses, and they're both shooting the ball well over 50% in St. Louis's case, 60%. That's one of the things you heard Travis Ford say throughout the early part of the year is, hey, we want to play that tempo. We want to get up the floor and play team basketball as Linson has checked into the game as well. And that man right there, Fred Thatch Jr., one of the more underrated players in the Atlantic 10. He does it all, and he puts St. Louis back up by two. That's a great pass by Linson. Looking for Fernandes along the baseline here. Linson missed the stretch of games going back to the Auburn contest. Here's Jones on the drive. Jones can't finish, kept alive, and then reeled in by Yuri Collins. We're going the other way. Collins does a great job reading the floor. We've seen that already tonight, whether to continue to push it and transition or pull it out like he just did. St. Louis native, and they knew he was going to be something special from the get-go. Here's Thatch Jr. He is a load, and he's able to finish high off the window. Missed the game on Saturday against Fordham, and Thatch Jr.'s already got four off the bench. Just pick and roll basketball. Linson, who also missed that game, set the screen for him. Minutemen struggling to get the ball inside in the rhythm of their offense. They've had to settle for some threes, able to score off some second chance opportunities in the paint, but having difficulty penetrating. Seven to shoot, here's Greg Jones, well defended by Linsons, and here comes Thatch, two on one. Thatch with the right hand, left it short, and Jones there with the rebound. A lot of contact both ways, being let go by the officials in the early going. Weeks will stroke a three, missed it all. I feel like that one maybe was quite in the rhythm of the, how this game has played out so far. Here's Jimerson. He'll launch a three. That's good. And the leading scorer for the Billikens doing just that here tonight. The Miniman have, eight. Str Miniman have struggled to guard the three-point line this season. And St. Louis not being shy about pulling the trigger. They're three out of four from deep so far. Yeah, they shoot 37% as a team. They don't have to rely on the three, which makes them so dangerous. Here's Greg Jones getting a lot of contact and he gets the bucket as Martin Linson gets whistled for his first defense. Well, Greg Jones has been quite a find for this UMass team. Didn't even play last year. Played at Division II Southern Connecticut the year before. and He had to fight through a lot of contact here down low. He's a tough customer and just kept battling away when he was able to draw the foul against Linson. Linson, the Dusseldorf Germany native. Had a few stops on his way yeah. between Dusseldorf and St. Louis. Valparaiso, UNC Wilmington, but has found a home here. After missing the last six games, he picks up his first foul, and now Greg Jones will pick up his first three points tonight. Two very good foul shooting teams. St. Louis 77%, UMass a shade over 73%. Greg Jones excited after that foul shot and that and one. A little bit of a different defensive alignment here for UMass. They've been dropping into that zone. Yeah, they used this against uh, Rhode Island, and it brought them back in the game from a big deficit uh, to single digits late. Looking to get it in. Pass from Hargrove is intercepted, and the zone creates a turnover here for the Minutemen. Under 12 to go in this first half. 
C.J. Kelly got the news earlier today that he would be coming back after missing the last couple of the games with an injury, and now Michael Stedman goes mid-range. Long two for Michael Stedman. He's not afraid to put it up from back there despite being 6'10". It's an interesting look here with St. Louis without Collins on the floor. Can they Garcia, who's checked back into the game for UMass. There you can see Fernandes trying to steal some minutes with him on the bench and get some looks for Garcia, but they've really done a nice job, one of the best in the country, and assist the turnovers and not giving away the basketball so far today. Two turnovers in this one for the Minutemen offensively. We have three guys who could run the point, Fernandes, Kelly, and Garcia at any one point. That's a design play right for C.J. Kelly, and he obliges. Well, after missing the last two games, that had to feel good for C.J. Kelly. He's a very important part of this UMass attack, the Albany transfer, and having him back gives UMass pretty much about as much, much depth as they're going to be able to have at this point of the season. Yeah, 14 points a game for C.J. Kelly. He converts on his first shot tonight and gives UMass back the lead, 23-22. Hargrove, Jr. left open. Around, no luck there, and the rebound reeled in by Stedman. Did a nice job boxing out that time against Jordan Nesbitt for St. Louis and won that rebound. Hargrove, 38% from long range. He's been good from that spot. An opening here for UMass Garcia. A little fadeaway baseline jumper. Wow. Pretty shot by Garcia. And that's one thing that's in his arsenal. He, not only can he shoot the three, but he's so good off the dribble. And that time able to pull up and hit a contested shot. He's one of those guys that's missed time with COVID and then the starts and stops last year. Really been a difficult opportunity to get him going for UMass. And here's a hustle play for C.J. Kelly. That'll warrant a high five from Matt McCall. And yeah, those are the kinds of things that Coach McCall loves, those hustle plays, those gritty plays. And despite being in the zone, Kelly read that well, came out and contested the pass. 7 nothing run here for UMass without Fernandes on the court. It's when they switched to the zone, too. Yep. It seems to have... Uh, flummoxed St. Louis a little bit. Although it looks like the Minutemen are in a little bit more of a man look now, or perhaps a hybrid. Great usage of the word flummoxed, my friend. Here's Thed Thatch for three, that's no good, and Kelly with the rebound. St. Louis has indeed flummoxed, they haven't scored in almost three minutes. And UMass just about gives it away, and Javon Garcia wants a timeout at the 9.38 mark. And too, talk about leaving it better than you found it. He's really turned them around and brought them back to prominence in the Atlantic 10, no question. So UMass utilizing that timeout to forgo a turnover into Stedman, got it deep, missed the bunny, and the rebound pulled down by Traore. That's one you gotta have if you're UMass. Here's Collins on the move. Always looking to dish, he does. Traore can't handle initially, swiped away by Jones and stolen by UMass. Minutemen at Traore, double team down low. 10-0 run for the Minutemen. Stedman going to work, little twist, missed it. And a foul coming as Jones, with a little extra effort there, knocking over Collins. Two good looks there for Michael Stedman around the basket. Yeah, the Minutemen have been able to get the ball down low with a little more regularity as we'll take another look at it. You know, you can see Jones right here, a little bit of a push in the back on Collins going after the loose ball, but they're getting the ball to Stedman. And you know, eventually he's going to find that touch and, and finish. Remember, he missed a lot of time at the beginning of the season as well and is still kind of getting his bearings. Yeah, missed the first five games. And you're right, I think it's just a little bit of that touch calibration off for Stedman. There's a lob into the post secured by Okoro and tapped up around, not there. Kelly gets his paws on it and a jump ball called will stay on St. Louis side. A great effort there by Kelly. Almost seated on the court as he tried to tie up the St. Louis player to win that jump ball. Does it feel like there's a little more passion on the side of UMass from where this team was against Rhode Island this past weekend? Perhaps could be a little desperation too. You know, oh, you look yeah. at the you look at the league record and it's 0-4, and, and you realize you got a tough stretch here. The Minutemen are playing like they really need this basketball game and like they understand where they are right now. 15 on the shot clock here for St. Louis and a whistle off the basketball. DeAndre Dominguez, I believe, has been whistled for the offense. The sophomore from Providence, Rhode Island. You know, you talk about Stedman struggling a little bit, but think about the big men we've seen in this, UMass has seen in this league. Brekovich, the Mitchell twins for <laughs> Rhode Island, and now Okoro and company here tonight. 
Brejkovic is a load. Oh. Be a first team all conference player. Oh. Collins looking for an out, find Stach, and a reach in called on Butchrick. So UMass trying to dig down defensively here and we'll give some more time on the shot clock as Butchrick picks up his first foul. And Miniman getting very aggressive with the hands down low, trying to deny passes. And Butchrick a little too aggressive that time. And that was the that was the call from head coach Matt McCall pregame. Nice inbound to Fred Thatch Jr. His third bucket tonight. Well timed pass to Thatch and the alley oop. That ends the 10-0 run. Butrick open for three. Airballed it. Collins right there for the rebound. An opportunity here for some momentum for St. Louis. Jimerson into traffic off the window. Gets the blocking foul as well. And he'll help back to the free throw line on the second foul for DeAndre Dominguez. Well, Jimerson's a good-sized guard at 6'5", but he showed off his speed going hard to the basket. Good read here as he split defenders and... Fights through a little bit of contact right at the basket. Heads to the line for the and one. Gibson Jimerson, the redshirt freshman who's been with this Billiken team for three years. What now? Well, it's, <laughs> that's how this works with the COVID rules and everything else. Played in limited action the previous two seasons. Missed on the free throw. St. Louis almost better than everybody in the NCAA and getting to the free throw line. UMass without a bucket. And over two minutes. The ball fake from Buttrick. Dominguez will take it for three. That's no good. And right into the arms of Kelly. C.J. Kelly drives and dishes. Sharing the basketball. They have eight assists on 11 field goals so far. Fred Thatch Jr. right to the bucket. Man, he's so good. So quick off the drive that time. Good aggressive take against the bigger Buttrick. And St. Louis again making a living in the paint. I mean, it's his aggressiveness, it's his toughness, and he's a guy that comes off the bench for St. Louis, which just gives him so much depth. Yeah, that term glue guy kind of oh, comes no to doubt. mind. St. Louis up by three. Looking to get Rich Kelly a shot. Kelly takes it into the paint. Tough shot for Kelly. No luck on the roll, and the rebound secured by Okoro. Miniman. Forced to work hard on that offensive possession and just couldn't finish. Good job on defense by St. Louis. You know, they're very aggressive, and the Minutemen having difficulty getting into the flow of their offense in that possession. Tough looking shot for Nesbitt. Leads to the run out for UMass. Kelly will pull up for three. It's good. Rich Kelly with his second triple tonight. Rich Kelly for him. Once he gets behind that three point line, it looks like the basket to him is about the size of an oil drum. I mean, he's. Just been lights out the last three games here in league play. Over 50%, 52% entering today. Hard take for Thatch Jr. doesn't go, and UMass with an opening here. And they're trying to get the ball to Kelly, and he just drives and dishes. Open man is Weeks, corner three. Okoro rebound. Wonder if Kelly could have just taken the ball to the basket himself. Yeah, he hasn't had a lot of luck and success in scoring when he's been able to drive and get downhill. He is a very good foul shooter, so perhaps you know, taking some contact could help them score in other ways. Good look down low to Jimerson, and Gibson Jimerson already in double figures here for St. Louis. St. Louis running through that set with good pace and a great backdoor cut by Jimerson. Kelly looking for Buttrick. Here's Fernandes, and an offensive foul called, second foul tonight. Uh, Trent Buttrick. Looks like he knocked Collins down with that moving screen. Buttrick, one of the two big guys UMass relies on, along with Stedman. And with the two fouls, he'll head to the bench. That brings Stedman back into the game. But UMass, when it comes to size, they don't have a whole lot of depth in that department. They have a, a great deal of guard depth, but positions three, four, five. That's been a bit of a problem for them, and that's what's led to a lot of the points in the paint for opponents. Yeah, and a lot of early game fouls, which have led to those guys taking a seat. Three attempt off the mark for Collins. There's TJ Weeks, one of the better rebounders for UMass, and Fernandes will blitz up ahead and draw the foul on DeAndre Jones. It's been a nice addition for this team, and four years at Central Arkansas State, averaging 15 minutes per game. 
Both teams not shy about pushing and transition, getting those rebounds and getting out and doing some running. I benefit UMass tonight with the return of C.J. Kelly. So to your point about depth in the backcourt. You can see they're trying to get Rich Kelly off those screens and get him an open shot. Fernandes. For three, that's no good. Jones keeps it alive right to Stedman, and he draws the foul. Trying to put it back, Terrence Hargrove will pick up the offense. And then do a nice job keeping that possession alive, getting that second chance opportunity. And Stedman will head to the foul line. For a big guy, he's a very good foul shooter at nearly 80%. Yeah, he's got a better touch from long distance and from the foul line than you might expect for a guy that's 6'10". The thing I liked about that take, too, he was he was aggressive and he was quick. He was, yeah. went right to the basket, drew the contact that time, instead of trying to put the ball on the ground and make a move or two. One out of two for Stedman. Okoro there with the rebound. He's already got four of those. Inside five minutes here in the first of our consecutive games between Massachusetts and St. Louis. It's been an effective defensive alignment for UMass. Yeah, they got out of it the last couple of possessions, but went back to that zone. Okoro caught it deep, couldn't finish. Stedman again, a nice job keeping the feet on the ground, keeping the arms up. Jones made like he was going to shoot the three and then maneuvers his way inside for the bucket, and the Minutemen retake the lead. What a move by Jones. Able to fake out the defender. Good aggressive take, and the Minutemen take the lead back. Minutemen up by one, 31-30. We're inside the final five minutes of the half presented by our friends at Mass General Brigham Sports Medicine. Together, we'll write your comeback story. Well, Jay, we talked about St. Louis and their big rebounding margin for the season, but right now the Minutemen out-rebounding them by two, so Minutemen really making a concerted effort to crash the boards, and it's paid off for them. And already eight points in the paint here for UMass. As we approach the four minute mark in the first half. St. Louis two and one in the Atlantic 10. Jimerson airballed it, offensive board. There's Hargrove, a swarm of UMass defenders and Hargrove can't quite muscle it up over the trio of Minutemen. Looking for weeks on the cut and a well deflected ball by Gibson Jimerson. Both teams, the shooting averages have cooled off a little bit. UMass just about 46%, and St. Louis right around the 44% range. UMass 4 out of 11 from three-point range, and the Billikens 3 of 8. Keep saying that UMass, you know, they might be getting lucky because they shoot over 45, 50% against an opponent any given night from three, but they do it on the regular. Here's Weeks, missed it. 13 of 24 from three-point range against URI. That was a good look from TJ Weeks. Deep, here's Okoro draws the foul on Stedman. Okoro able to find a little lane that time. Get Ste got Stedman out of position and took the contact and will head to the foul line. Okoro, it's about a 74% foul shooter. I was going to say, similar to Stedman, he can make these sat out last year with the transfer rule. Sophomore at Oregon made 18 starts. Three points, four rebounds per game. A former four-star recruit. For whomever is playing down low, of course, big shoes to fill with Hassan French, who did such a great job. The Springfield Mass product for St. Louis over the last several years. Yeah, you say if you're the rest of the A-10, hey, we don't have to see Hassan French anymore. <laughs> well, guess what? You got to see Francis Okoro. And the damage he can do, the difference is Okoro can make free throws as he did right there. Billikens back up by one. Kelly to Stedman. He'll take that mid-range. Back rim, no, and it's knocked out of bounds by Okoro. He knocks over a defender as well, and Francis Okoro will pick up his first foul. Well, teams working so hard on the boards, and that was evidence of it right there, despite the fact Okoro drew the foul. 
he was crashing the boards, and I'm sure when Travis Ford called that timeout after the made basket a little over a minute ago, that was one of the things he probably said was, we got to get after it on the rebounding department. It's the fifth team foul on St. Louis as we approach three minutes. Stedman goes right to him, up top to Fernandes. Fernandes step back three, and a foul coming. Aided Fernandes, didn't get a good look off, and Yuri Collins begrudgingly will pick up his first foul. Noah, Fern Noah Fernandes, just three points so far tonight, and he went with the patented step back, and looked like Collins maybe walked right into him as he was coming down. Seen Fernandes use that step back move a ton this season. 81% from the free throw line on the year, misses the first one. UMass just two of five from the foul line here in the first half. Yeah, you look at Fernandes. He's really patented that step back move. He's been able to use it as a weapon multiple times. We saw him hit the game winner against Rutgers earlier this year. It's all about who he feels comfortable with. And it's all about the speed, too. He can do it so fast that the defender just doesn't realize it's coming. And it's a great way to, to create space without having to create contact. Two out of three for Fernandes. And back and forth we go. UMass up by one. Neither team's had a lead of bigger than seven points. That was St. Louis at the 12.30 mark of the first half. And so Coro got it deep, and another dunk for the big man. Looked like some confusion on the defensive end for UMass. Good pass right to Okoro. He did a good job keeping that ball high and dunked it home. Eight points for him. Nifty spin move for Fernandes, but it wasn't there. Garcia, baseline jumper. Jones, no good. And Collins there for the rebound. Minutemen have missed seven of their last eight shots. Somehow still only down by one. Jimerson. That's no good, and here comes Kelly with a rebound for the Minutemen. Good elevation there for Kelly. Garcia was left wide open. His 12-footer doesn't go, and Thatch Jr. heading the other way, two on two. Left it for Hargrove, and an offensive foul called. What a hard stand to take for C.J. Kelly, and he is showing something of another level tonight defensively. Especially coming off being out of the lineup for two games due to injury, and. He stood there strong and tall and took the charge. Great pass there, but he read it well, was able to get in the passing lane and cut off the St. Louis player and take that hard contact. That's 6'4", 215 of East St. Louis pride. Hargo just running into Kelly, and he's able to stand tall. Creates another turnover. That's five so far for the Billikens tonight. They will turn it over. 14 turnovers per game. They had 20 and the win against Fordham. Fernandes and Yuri Collins, great matchup to watch tonight. Seven to shoot here for the Minutemen. Gonna have to go, deep shot for Fernandes, wow! Noah Fernandes showing off his range. St. Louis defended well in that possession, but Minutemen with Fernandes showing off his uh, Ability from way downtown. How deflating is that? You, you put up a defensive effort for the majority of the shot clock, and then with three seconds to go, Fernandes with a logo three. Thatch hounded by Jones. Ten to shoot here. Jimerson on the drive. He missed it, gets it back, and draws the whistle. And we'll head back to the free throw line for the third time as they got Fernandes on that. Jimerson showing off his ability there. His lips a little bit going to the foul line. CJ Kelly on the foul, excuse me there. He's emerged as the, the go-to scoring threat for the St. Louis team, Jimerson. He's almost an 89% foul shooter, Jay, too. So not a guy you want to, you know, when he drives, you know, you have that in the back of your mind. There's some guys you want to follow and you don't mind putting on the line. Jimerson's not one of them. No, without a doubt. And I mean, this St. Louis team, 14th in the NCAA in free throws made. And doing what they've done this year, as I mentioned early on, without Javante Perkins, who was a preseason all-first conference member, was out 
in the preseason after he tore his ACL. Yes, Despite and losing him, they've been 11 and five this year. They had to deal with the lengthy COVID shutdown as well. CJ Kelly takes a deep three. That's not there, and Okoro with the rebound. And the men have been settling for a lot of deep threes instead of running through their offense. Fernandes able to hit one late in the shot clock, but St. Louis uh, maybe flustering UMass a little bit, and then have been settling for threes, which we've seen them do it from time to time this season. Okoro again catches it deep, left hand turnaround, and yep, got it. Great touch by Okoro, and good quick pass, realizing Okoro had the position down low, and the big man finishes, he's got 10. I mean, it's really hard to defend when you catch it that deep in the post. We saw the Mitchell twins get that position too against UMass, but head coach Matt McCall said it's not just the post ups in the paint, it's not just getting whipped off the bounce, as he calls it. It's just a lack of packing in and helping your teammate. Here's Fernandes, who draws the foul with 3.4 seconds to go. Yeah, Fernandes wasn't going to let the ball out of his hands for that last shot, was he? He went one-on-one -on -one that time, able to create the contact and get himself to the foul line. St. Louis taking a piece out of Rhode Island's playbook against UMass. Rhode Island had more than 40 points in the paint on Saturday. St. Louis already has 22. UMass eight, but that's just as many as they had the whole game on Saturday. Yeah, no matter what, if you're the Minutemen, you have to figure out how to score some twos as part of our big white world-class market recipe for success tonight. And some of that comes from patience too. They know they're a three good three-point shooting team, so sometimes they're comfortable putting them up maybe a little bit too quick instead of running through the offense. But they're also good in transition, and that's a great way to get some twos. Nine points for Fernandes here in the first half. Collins will be called for a carry. And the Minutemen saying, wow, that's the first time we've seen that called against us this year. There's a call, I think it was late in one of the games, against, I think it was the Davidson game maybe it was, that hindered UMass's comeback attempt. And I think they may want to look at look the, at the game time. clock. Nope, they want to make sure they get the spot right. And I think UMass, they're going to move Kelly all the way down the sideline, so... Certainly a, a big help here as they do have an opportunity as a catch and shoot. Kelly got open and they'll count it if they outscored UMass 24 to 8 in the paint in the first 20 minutes. Wonder if the Minutemen might go back to that zone that seemed to yield some frustration for St. Louis. Yeah, it looked like that had its effectiveness in stymieing the interior possessions of Okoro. TJ Weeks doing the job defensively five rebounds in the first half here's rich kelly nice look to stedman kelly driving that time great anticipation getting the ball over to stedman not an easy f shot for stedman either assist number 501 in the career of rich kelly umass back up by one yuri collins able to draw that kick call he didn't score in the first half, Jay, but he had six rebounds and six assists in 19 minutes. And only one turnover. And neither, neither team turned the ball over very much in the first half. 5-4 St. Louis. Collins coming off a nine assist performance. Ten to shoot here for St. Louis. He'll take a three off the mark for Collins. UMass can't gather, and it goes right to Okoro. And his hook finds its way through. Well, there's baby hooks and there's big hooks, and that was the big hook by Okoro. Pretty shot there, and he has 12 points. He had 11 in the win against Fordham on Saturday. St. Louis really put the clamps on Fordham in the second half of that game. It wasn't pretty in the first half as we have an offensive foul against the Minutemen. That's Michael Stedman who picks up his second, so you've got two on Stedman for UMass, two on Buttrick. There's Coach Travis Ford, able to welcome in Rick Pitino in Iona a couple of games ago. That was the game was arranged on about 36 hours notice with both teams losing games because of COVID. Iona went out there and only lost by one point. It ended up being a heck of a ball game. Of course, Travis Ford played for Rick Pitino at Kentucky back in the day. The Final Four team in 93. Five to shoot here for St. Louis. Collins a floater and he nails it. Did it too with the shot clock running down and 
Gary Collins checking in in the scoring column. His first basket, the Minutemen throw it away. Mass turns it over again now, six turnovers. And that felt like a bucket for Collins where it didn't feel like a high percentage shot, but he was open and took it. And gets his first basket tonight. It shows how creative of a basketball player he is. We've seen his passing ability, obviously, but right there knowing he didn't have much time and being challenged, went to the high floater. Play with a preseason third team selection. Could move up the charts with the year that he's had so far. Jimerson trying to worm his way through and draws another foul on Michael Stedman. Again, St. Louis is pounding it inside. Stedman picking up the foul. You know, no question, you know, St. Louis saw that film with UMass against Rhode Island and how much UMass struggled with interior defense. And, you know, teams are going to keep doing this until the Minutemen come up with a way to stop it. It was three-point defense early in the season for the Minutemen. Lately, it's been interior defense that's been the problem. Not the guy you want to send to the foul line, as we discussed in the first half, as Jimerson connects now 15 points. Do you feel like maybe that's just one of those things where you're getting beat on the three-point line night in and night out? Okay, so how do we fix it? And you do, but you leave yourself open and exposed on the interior. Kind of an overcorrection. Yeah, I think sometimes you focus so hard on one thing that you're struggling with that other things you know, kind of fall through the cracks. That may very well be the case. Fernandes with a leaner, and he knocks it down. He's into double figures. He was off balance, too, able to gather himself again and found a wide open lane. 11 for Fernandes. He had 18 against Rhode Island on Saturday. Needless to say, two. Oh, Big half here growth. for the Minutemen. Oh. Coach McCall giving up about a foot to Stedman. <laughs> <laughs> Looking, having to look up. Seven points for Stedman. So far in this row, this one as Hargrove connects. But despite it all, the Minutemen hanging around in this one, down to four. Ten to shoot here for UMass Buttrick. Going to work with a mismatch on Collins, or Collins pokes it away. Five on the shot clock. Weeks on Jimerson, high off the glass, he scores. Such an athletic take there by Weeks against Jimerson, and TJ has great leaping ability, and he needed it that time as he went high off the glass with the lay-in. Seven points for TJ Weeks tonight. It's a two-point lead for St. Louis. Looks like the Minutemen have gone back to the zone. Especially without Stedman in there. And Wanted to get any fouls on Buttrick, and we're going the other way. A foul called on Francis Okoro. Okoro throwing a forearm. Second foul on Okoro. Let's see if the Minutemen go right after him and try to pick up the third against the St. Louis big man. They do have some depth, obviously, down low, but mind having to put him on the have him go to the bench for a few minutes. Yeah, Martin Linson's the other big for St. Louis, but he's been out the last six games. Greg Jones, another hard take, and Jones after the spin finishes. It's the Minutemen kind of forsaking the three-pointer in their own right here in the second half. They're aggressively go trying to go down low as well. 6-1 run for UMass, all tied at 45. Linson's played just four minutes tonight, too, if you're Thinking about backups to Okoro. Jimerson goes into Kelly, left it short. Okoro goes over everybody and flushes it through. His third dunk tonight. Yeah, Okoro left open for the rebound, wasn't boxed out, and he'll make you pay each and every time on the offensive glass if that happens. Approaching double double territory, gets Okoro. Played awful hard tonight. Going to add to that graphic right there, and Buttrick does for UMass as he got the third foul on Okoro heading into break. No look pass from Collins to Thatch, and again, he is a freight train when he gets the basketball in the paint. For, uh, the Billikens did a good job extending that zone for UMass, and Thatch able to find the sweet spot right in the middle. Minutemen J have five field goals in the second half. All of them have come in the paint. Kelly will launch a three. That's back rim. Jones with the offensive board for the Minutemen. Second chance. Six offensive boards now for the Minutemen to seven for St. Louis. 
Fernandes has a step high off the glass and a little luck for Fernandes as well. Acrobatic move by Noah. He's up to 13, open shooter Nesbitt for three. Gives St. Louis a lot of credit. They knew Fernandes had to gather himself, so they hit the gas in transition in a big three. Four three-point make tonight for St. Louis, and now Fernandes starting to take over back-to-back -back buckets for the leader. Open Jimerson, he might pull the trigger on that shot. And the Minutemen have to be aware that when they score, they, especially playing the zone, they got to really make an effort to get back on defense because St. Louis is trying to attack. That's got to be an offensive foul on Thatch as he just gave the shoulder right into Greg Jones. Now they're going to call it on Jones. That's a tough pill to swallow for Jones. Here's Thatch, who's built like a fullback. Yeah, Jones a little bit late getting to the spot that time. And the right call made, I believe. Just a half a fraction, and he's still just finishing that slide to his left there when the contact came. Second foul on Greg Jones. 14 minutes to play in this one. Here's Thatch again. Had his steam stolen this time by the Kellys. Rich Kelly gets tangled up and draws a crowd and a foul. And then forced the eighth turnover against St. Louis tonight. Been an interesting game, Jay, if you think of it. Minutemen play zone a lot. They have played zone a lot, so that usually means a lower scoring game, but not in this case. St. Louis has done a nice job, you know, realizing that the zone's out there, so trying to beat them down the floor and transition to attack it. Three team fouls for St. Louis. That one called on Nesbitt, which is his second. C.J. Kelly. Trying to gather himself, missed the close one in the rebound for Linson. Job of defense by Linson, did not make life easy on Kelly. Linson coming uh, back into the lineup after a lengthy absence. Jimerson just decides to take it, he was left wide open. Minutemen really need to continue to attack down low with the Coro out of the lineup. Fernandes stepping through and Fernandes, the shot won't count, draws more contact again on Nesbitt. To be his third, the transfer from Memphis. I think he took a little shot from Linson after the fact, too. Sending him to the deck. You see Fernandes now, 24 minutes played. I mean, he is 38, 39 minutes in each and every game. Nice inbound to Butchrick, and he draws contact on Thatch. And Butchrick will go back to the free throw line. Brought Butchrick around the weak side, the offside. Trent, a very good foul shooter. He'll head back to the foul line. Minutemen, six out of nine from the stripe tonight. St. Louis, eight out of 10. Of course, the Penn State transfer, Buttrick. The Minutemen beat Penn State here earlier in the season. Be a very sweet night for Buttrick, I'm sure. He put up a career high 19, and UMass then beat Rutgers, and you thought this team was gonna kind of create some noise, but it's been a flat footed start to the 8-10 schedule, and Buttrick takes one out of two. Batch again, attacks and scores. And the UMass top of the zone again, extended a little too much, and Thatch able to work his way between levels. Wide open, Greg Jones missed it as Jimerson came flying in to deflect. Where did missed he come opportunity. from? Yeah, he's Aggressive recovery on defense as Jones was wide open. Jimerson now attacks on his own end. Missed it. Linson there for the board. And Linson left-hand scoop. St. Louis crashing the boards. Hard take by Jimerson wouldn't go. But Linson getting himself back into the lineup with the second chance. It's a difficult sequence for UMass. And Fernandes spins it up and I'll head back to the line. Well, that's how you overcome a difficult sequence. You create one down at the other end for your opponent. Noah Fernandes, you can see he's playing with a lot of fire, fighting through a lot of contact here in the second half. Rolls off the screen by Jones, blows right by the St. Louis defender, Linson. And he takes some contact for his trouble and a chance to even up this game again. Second foul on Linson. And Fernandes converts. Nine points already in the second half for Noah. 18 overall for Fernandes to lead. All scores here tonight as we approach 12.25 to go. Oh, 
Ash Jr. off the bench has been so difficult for the Minutemen. To Nesbitt, guarded by Kelly, and Nesbitt gets the whistle. And aided on that call as C.J. Kelly picks up his second. Uh, Kelly might have walked into him a little bit. Had the hand straight up, but I, I think he got him with the body. St. Louis doing what they normally do at the foul line, eight out of 10. As Matt McCall uh, checks with assistant coach Jacob Kurtz on the bench. Nesbitt 68% and he gets the first one. Interesting, Jay, the Minutemen have only, after attempting 15 three-pointers in the first half, have only attempted one here in the second half and they're eight out of 11 shooting. So as concerted an effort and as successful of an effort to get the ball down low and score as we've seen from them in quite a while. Getting some, I won't call them easy baskets, but some closer looks as Nesbitt hits both free throws. First year at St. Louis after playing at Memphis. He's got eight tonight. Two point lead yet again for St. Louis. Fernandes, of course, has been the go-to offensively for UMass. UMass has to go five on the shot clock. Fernandes, a little step back, got his man up in the air and missed it all. A shock ball or the ball <laughs> of the puck or something like that. Oh, it feels like the hockey team has been away forever because they have been. Big game, too, against Northeastern, who's having a great season. The Minutemen are, too. It's a four, or rather, six big Hockey East points uh, on deck for that weekend series. There's Thatch on Buttrick, and he draws the foul. Well, Fred Thatch is 6'3", but he's 215 pounds, and he is strong. And despite his size, he's... Very aggressive in the paint, not afraid to go to the basket, and he's absorbed a lot of contact tonight. He's not the guy you thought that would give UMass a lot of trouble in the paint, but he sure has now with 14 points. 15 for Thatch off the bench. He's dealt with kind of an ongoing injury over the last couple of years. It cut his season short two years ago, but 77 career games for St. Louis. And here he's able to build the lead for the Billikens. Corner three, Kelly. Off the mark, gets it back, zips it into Jones, who finishes. Greg Jones giving up some size down low, but a good quick put back. And then able to create something after a tough shot by Kelly. Seven offensive rebounds here for UMass. Collins thought about stepping into the three. Billikens up three. Open in the corner, Nesbitt gives it up to Collins. Seven to shoot. Got to go for the Billikens and an offensive foul called. That's on Fred Thatch Jr. He picks up his second on the moving screen. That's already seven against St. Louis, so the Minutemen figure to get to the foul line quite a bit over the next 10 minutes and 34 seconds. Minutemen have already committed six as well. And if you're down late against the St. Louis team that can shoot foul shots like they can, that's a tough position to be in. And Fernandes lost it, stolen by St. Louis. Collins can't save it on the other side, and that'll give it and take it away here for the Billikens. And neither team a real pretty possession either way that time. Minutemen turn it over, but St. Louis throws it right away. UMass will have to try to find the hot hand from long range. Is that Rich Kelly? Can they get him open looks? TJ Weeks or CJ Kelly? You've got plenty of options. St. Louis has switched to a little bit of a yeah. zone of their own. Javon Garcia trying to penetrate, and Garcia does that so well, able to finish. So quick off the drive, and he has great leaping ability and, and long wing and a big wingspan. And that is just so impressive. You know, when he gets around the basket, he's able to go around defenders with those long arms. Had just three points in the loss against Rhode Island this past weekend, up to four here tonight. One point lead for St. Louis with the basketball. Quick little four nothing run by the Minutemen. Thatch with the jumper, missed it. Kept alive by Buttrick. He kept it away from Treori to save the possession for the Minutemen. Here comes C.J. Kelly, had it stripped, and it'll stay UMass basketball. Fans at the Mullen Center thought there might have been a foul there. 
You're lucky enough to come away with the possession here. Yeah, you'll take that, though. 22 on the shot clock. Kelly on the inbound to Fernandes. Fernandes gets a look, left it short. Traore there with a the rebound. Now Collins Ooh. will give it away in a foul call. Head of steam and out of control for Yuri Collins. And shaking up there, C.J. Kelly. He almost went clear off the court. Rich Kelly's going to come back into the game. So as you say, Jay, maybe he's the guy that'll get things going. Miniman are going to get foul shots out of this as well. Right, three fouls to add to that for Yuri Collins. So DeAndre Jones will come in for him. Collins uh, spent a decent amount of time on the bench in the first half, too, in the middle part. Yeah, as he did in that Fordham game, where Jones was able to pick up 20-plus minutes. So C.J. Kelly to the free throw line, 74%. On the year for Kelly, first end of the one and one is good. There's four points today for Kelly in the return to the lineup. But six rebounds, and he's played pretty well on defense, I'd say. You know, trying to get the shooting touch back as well, but all in all, not a bad game for the for the uh, Albany transfer. UMass will take both free throws and retake the lead. Yeah, there hasn't been that big scoring run by either no. team, and if. Somebody can muster one, you know, it'll be very interesting to see if that's the decisive knockout punch in this game. UMass has only led by as many as three, St. Louis seven. Eight to shoot. Here's Jones, pounded by Kelly, and will get the benefit of the foul on C.J. Kelly as he picks up his third. Foul trouble starting to mount both directions. So you have Okoro and Nesbitt and Collins for St. Louis with three fouls. And you have Stedman, Buttrick, and C.J. Kelly with three fouls for UMass. I don't know if you want to get into a free throw contest here with St. Louis if you're Massachusetts. No, I don't, I don't believe you do. I mean, UMass is not a bad foul shooting team, but you know, St. Louis basically makes four out of every five that they take. DeAndre Jones at 93% on the year. Particularly if this game remains tight, these are going to be just so critical. Jones hits them both. Billikens 13 out of 15 now in the evening. And UMass 10 out of 14. Minutemen have not utilized much of TJ Weeks here in the second half. It's been a lot of CJ Kelly. Into that zone look for St. Louis. To Buttrick. Out to Kelly. Kelly penetrates, dishes to Buttrick. Buttrick draws contact and will head to the line. Couldn't quite finish it off, but a foul on Fred Thatch Jr., which would be his third. And that opportunity all opened up because they were able to initially get the ball to Buttrick in the middle of the zone. They collapse down on him, he kicks it out, and then all of a sudden the zone's kind of lost its form. The Minutemen able to get Buttrick to go to the basket, and he'll head to the foul line. Buttrick two of three from the foul line today, and he hits on the first one. And that's the sort of patience and the sort of ball movement we haven't seen from the Minutemen at times on offense. You know, instead of settling for threes, they're making a concerted effort to run through the offense and get the ball in the paint. We are wearing out that lead changes graphic here tonight. One point lead for Massachusetts. Minutemen have 20 points in the paint in the second half. What's interesting is that UMass can kind of change their identity on, a, on the fly like that during this season. Get points in the paint. Nesbitt with the long-range jumper, and Jones there for the rebound for the Minutemen. Opening here for UMass. Just one of their last seven from three-point range. Rich Kelly getting downhill, and... He's been a great addition to this UMass staff. You can tell the players really look up to him. Oh, he's so much fun to be around. And he's too. a great guy. He is a lot of fun. Incredible basketball knowledge as Rich Kelly knocks down both free throws. And UMass has matched their largest lead. They've done it from the free throw line. Open in the left corner for three. That's off the mark by Rashad Williams. His first shot today, and it was a big one. Benjamin went to a zone press that time, left Williams open in the corner, but he couldn't cash in. 
Rich Kelly, baseline and pushed out of bounds by Yuri Collins. UMass starting to rack up the fouls on St. Louis. That's four on Collins. Feels like a side of the coin that the Minutemen haven't been on recently is kind of getting the benefit there and sending Rich Kelly, a very good free throw shooter, back to the line. I think it's a byproduct of going hard to the basket. You go to the basket, you're going to get fouled. You shoot three pointers, Minutemen do it great, but there's going to just naturally going to be less contact. That's a fair point. Kelly with the free throw is good. You're already double bonus for St. Louis as Rich Kelly is starting to fill it up from the free throw line. And not insignificant there. Yeah, four fouls on Yuri Collins. Largest lead today for UMass and Rich Kelly up to double figures, 68-63. And how can St. Louis cope without their main distributor? Second in the NCAA in assists per game, Yuri Collins. Another three for Williams. He drills it. Seven of 20 from three-point range this year for Williams. Only averages nine points a game, but kind of two points or nine minutes a game and two points. Maybe a bit of a secret weapon for yeah. Travis Ford. Tactical coming in here at a critical time for head coach Travis Ford. UMass up by two. Kelly walking the tightrope, gets the Garcia, goes right into Okoro, and will get helped out with that foul on Okoro. And now he's looking at foul trouble. Travis Ford not happy in the St. Louis sideline. Again, the Minutemen, they found this aggressive streak in the second half. They've only attempted two three-pointers after attempting 15 in the first half. And they have just put their heads down and driven right to the basket as Travis Ford. Something to say about that last call. Fourth personal on Okoro. Garcia hits the free throw. Minutemen are 12 out of 13 from the foul line in the second half, too. They stop attempting threes. You know, you look at the first half foul shots, five out of eight. Now it's 12 out of 13, 13 out of 14, because they've become aggressive. So when you get there, you got to make them. And UMass has done that. Meanwhile, 13 of 15 for St. Louis from the free throw line. Now can the Minutemen get the stops they need to try to grow this lead? That's been a problem for them, particularly in second halves, getting crucial stops at critical times. 10 turnovers tonight for St. Louis. A deep three again, around and out. A lot of spin on that ball from Williams. Not shy to pull the trigger. Kelly in the corner, he responds. That's top of the backboard, no, and the rebound pulled down by Jimerson. Kelly was a very difficult angle. Another bombs away three for Williams, and the ball kept alive by Kelly. We're going the other way, one on two. CJ Kelly lost it there to scoop it up. Garcia, and he gets fouled. And a frenetic back and forth here for both teams and missed opportunities, I think you could say, on both ends. I think both teams forcing the three-pointer in that sequence, but good hustle by CJ Kelly to force the turnover. Got the ball to the front court, a little out of control going to the basket, but Javon Garcia cleaning things up behind him. A long three, it's yeah. off the back rim, and there's Kelly knocking it away. And he took off to the races, but was unable to elude Jones that time, but Garcia right behind to help him out. Garcia misses on the free throw. That foul was called on Gibson Jimerson, which is just his first. He's had a pretty quiet second half. He had 12 points, I believe it was, at halftime, 14. Minutemen have held him to just two. Garcia missed them both. Big break for the Billikens right there. Huge stroke of luck here for the Billikens. And now Jones goes all the way. And DeAndre Jones with a critical basket here for St. Louis. When St. Louis has had success, it's been right there, forcing the tempo, beating UMass back, not allowing them to get into that zone and getting an easy layup. UMass has gotten better looks here in the second half, as you've outlined with the points in the paint. To Jones. Jones off the glass. Good feed from Fernandes. Noah Fernandes, great vision to pick up his fourth assist, and Jones at the finish. The Minutemen have been doing this, too, with a smaller lineup with Michael Stedman on the bench for a lot of the second half. Stedman with those three fouls, deep three. I think it was deflected by Javon Garcia. Nope, nope. He says, I didn't touch it. That was just an air ball by Jimerson. And St. Louis, when they've been in the half court, they've resorted to a lot of three-pointers. Now just five out of 16. Not there. They've become the team that has kind of 
lost their patience on offense. I think that's a good way to put it. And they were five of 10 on Saturday. You know, they don't shoot a ton of threes, but they'll be able to take those high percentage shots. Buttrick, little ball fake, wide open shot. He nails it. Trent Buttrick, for a bigger guy, does a good job of faking and, and has a good handle when he does put the ball on the ground. And that was a very nice fake to create the space and a big basket to extend this UMass lead. The largest lead as we're in the final five, presented by Mass General Brigham, Cooley Dickinson Hospital. We'll write your comeback story together. Jimerson, step back, corner three, and he knocks it down. Huge shot by Jimerson. Able to shake loose that time from C.J. Kelly and pull St. Louis right back within the one possession. That's a shot of adrenaline there for the Billikens. Felt like it was slipping away from him. And now Garcia tries to respond for UMass indeed. Tremendous response and a big smile for Javon Garcia. Hitting that three from the left side. The Minutemen coming up with another answer. 77-71. Jimerson. Goes baseline, and he draws the, has crossed the 20 point threshold, and they'll apply some pressure with 3.50 to go. That's one thing the Minutemen need to keep in mind, is he gonna try not to foul, even though they're ahead, because St. Louis shoots the ball so well from the foul line. Poke away from Yuri Collins, as St. Louis has started to clamp down defensively here. You can see they ratcheted it up to the next level. Seven on the shot clock, Fernandes three. That's off the mark, back tapped and right to C.J. Kelly. The Minutemen are gonna slow things down here. Just one for six from three point range of the Minutemen here in the second half, but they have scored 22 points in the paint. They're shooting almost 60%, just over 60%. A whistle before Fernandes could get that pass away and a charge called on Noah Fernandes. He picks up his first personal foul tonight. Big play by the Billikens to force the turnover to key juncture of this game. There's Fernandes, and that's a pretty good call yep. as he plowed right into Fred Thatch. UMass, just that one three-point shot you were talking about, made by Javon Garcia moments ago, the only three they've made here in the second half as we've reached the three-minute mark. And C.J. Kelly called for another foul, which would be his fourth. Well, he thought he got away with it. I think Matt McCall did too. Oftentimes you see that reach and sometimes officials will anticipate that call. If there's one guy you're gonna send to the free throw line, both teams in the double bonus. It's Kelly, you've got four fouls on Buttrick. Is this man right here, Thatch. That's the weakness for Thatch, just 66% as he gets the touch on the first one. 16 points tonight for Fred Thatch Jr. And he makes both free throws in a crucial moment. He is a true sixth man in every sense of the word. Back to a two point game. Fernandes cornered. UMass hadn't seen this in a while and he's pushed out of bounds. St. Louis bench thought he was bailed out in the corner. Travis Ford, you can see, not happy about that one whatsoever. That's gonna put Noah on the foul line. We'll get another look at it here. But definitely a great job of the Billikens. Yep, bodied him up just a hair. Yep, just enough to force him out of bounds. I think if Noah was not in the corner, they probably would have let that go, but they had to make a call because he did step out of bounds. 18 points for Noah Fernandes tonight. Talked about St. Louis's foul shooting a minute and now 20 out of 26. And 14 out of 17 in the second half. The Billikens 12 out of 13 in their own right. One out of two for Fernandes. We said it at the outset. Been some close games between these two teams over the last four years. Open. Hargrove takes the three and he knocks it down. St. Louis has such balanced scoring and Terrence Hargrove averaging about nine points a game. Good three point shooter. And it's hard to key in on any one guy in the St. Louis team, especially in a situation here. Game here coming down the stretch. And it's been St. Louis's pressure defense that's affected UMass over the last couple of minutes and led to the 7-1 run 
over the last 81 seconds that St. Louis has been on. Mass going to the weave. I think you're absolutely right on that on how St. Louis has taken this defensive pressure to another level. Eight to shoot for UMass. And this has been the offense right here, just Fernandes drive and go and draw contact, and he does it again, this time on Lacina Traore. The Ivory Coast native picks up his first foul and more free throws forthcoming here for Fernandes. And that's going to bring Francis Okoro to the scorer's table with the four fouls. He's been out quite a ways here because of the foul trouble, but now's the time to bring him back in. Kind of has the feel offensively for UMass if we go back to that Jersey Mike's Classic down in Florida where they struggled to score against UNC Greensboro down the stretch, but they were able to keep their hopes alive and win the game I believe because of this right here. I believe that's the game where in overtime they hit a three-pointer from Debaji Walker and were 11 from 11 from the foul line to win it. And just enough to get it done as Fernandes hits both. 21 points tonight for Fernandes. UMass has a two-point lead. Facing their old head coach in Travis Ford. Thatch Jr. draws contact and finishes. Well, Fred Thatch is having himself quite a night. Good aggressive take there, fighting through the contact by Garcia. And he has provided such a spark coming off the bench for the St. Louis club. Now Garcia moving his feet there, and Fred Thatch loving it, but he Rattles in the foul shot. And he just matched his career high with 20. And gives St. Louis a one point lead. Final two minutes here from Amherst. Someone needs to make a shot for the Minutemen outside of getting to the free throw line. And again, that pressure by St. Louis is affecting how UMass is getting into their offense and throwing off their rhythm, throwing off their flow. Javon Garcia trying to drive, bodied up by Thatch, nowhere to go, gets by him and squeaks through for the bucket. Massachusetts back up by one. Garcia just had a little bit of a sliver, and again, that long reach able to get just by Thatch and lay it in. 11 points for Garcia tonight. Approaching the final minute here at the Mullen Center, into the post, Okoro. Okoro spinning and able to complete the turnaround. Buttrick slipped that time, just not able to recover and Okoro finishes. Okoro also approaching a career high here tonight. Final minute. Fernandes with a mismatch with Okoro on him. Trying to get a step. Gets a Okoro up in the air. Leans in and timeout there first. Both teams with two timeouts. Collins back in the game playing with four fouls for St. Louis. Okoro has fouled out. Buttrick and Kelly, CJ, both playing with four fouls for UMass. Collins, and a block comes from TJ Weeks. UMass secures it, and then Jones gets bumped by Treori. TJ Weeks high-fiving some of the fans here at courtside. That might be the biggest play of the year right now for the Minutemen. Let's take a look. TJ has great leaping ability, and he just went up and just plain blocked that ball. Traore did everything he should have done. He kept that ball over his head, but that's how well TJ Weeks can jump. And Traore, 6'9", 215 pounds. Now critical free throws down the other end for Jones. 81% from the free throw line on the year, and Jones hits the first one. Then it meant 18 out of 22 in the second half of the foul line, and 23 for 30 from the game. Jones quietly has had a solid performance tonight. 11 points, make it 12 and four rebounds, two possessions. The difference here. Miniman do not want to foul with St. Louis's foul shooting ability. Shot clock off. Collins dumps it off and it's knocked away by Garcia, stolen by Massachusetts. And the Minutemen can feel it here inside the Mullen Center. What a gritty second half by this UMass team. Going hard to the paint. They've scored 26 points in the paint in the second half. They've amped up the defensive intensity. They've brought themselves to the foul line nine more times in the second half compared to St. Louis at 11 for the game. And 
It's not in the bag yet, but the Minutemen have done everything they've needed to do coming down the stretch to try to put this thing away. Last time Travis Ford returned to Amherst, it was something similar, a 67-63 UMass win. That was on February 18th of 2020. The names have changed, but the result here pending for UMass looking optimistic. And it's been a phenomenal game for this man as well. Javon Garcia hits them both. St. Louis needs something quickly here with 14 seconds. Thatch Jr. takes a three. That's back rim, no. Long rebound. It's Garcia, and Garcia with the finishing touches. And Travis Ford giving Brian Dorsey a piece of his mind. Well, it's been a tough day for the Billikens from the foul perspective. UMass has taken advantage of that, and they've been aggressive as Jimerson will add to his total. He crosses the 20-point threshold, but too little, too late.